Next speaker is Cook B. Michael Laborde, chief of the Whispering Pines Clinton Indian Band. Chief Michael Laborde is of Sequatmec, Statlium, and Okanagan heritage. He is the proud father of three and is the son of Duke Laborde of Clinton and Charlotte Laborde, formerly of Hacklip. His maternal roots can be traced to Chief Comox. Chief Laborde also serves as founding chairperson of the Tulo School of Indigenous Economics in Part Thompson Rivers University and the First Nations Tax Commission. Michael also serves with Bud Smith, formal MLA for Kamloops, and Dr. Bishop, professor at University of Victoria. Chief Laborde also serves as director with Cayuse Creek Development Corporation, an alternative energy and community-based resource producer. Cayuse Creek Developments is a leader in First Nations partnerships, developing community-based projects, and is key in the development of culturally sensitive, sustainable resource practices. Chief Mike was elected to the All Nation Trust Company Board in 2011 and serves with full bar board participation in the loan folio, which provides startup loans to those of Aboriginal descent province wide. Chief Laborde has also served as co chairperson of the Shushup Nation Tribal Council. Please help me in welcome Chief Mike. Cook's Jim. That, that, guy's, that guy sounds impressive, whoever he is. <clears throat> um, the one thing I, wa I learned before anybody else here was that Shane was lactose intolerant. <laughs> I knew that told you guys speak. Um, I just wanted to um, thank Chief, Chief Joe and, and Chief Bernie Mack for coming down and, and sharing their experiences. I also want to recognize some other uh, uh, chiefs in the house. Uh, Chief Art Adolf from Hachlip, Chief Nelson Leon from Adams Lake, Chief Judy Wilson from uh, Nisconliffe, Chief Francis Alec, my cushion, He's from uh, Pavilion, and Chief Aaron Sam. I, I welcome you to uh, Kamloops. I also, I also wanted to recognize uh, um, some of our former chiefs who, without them, we wouldn't be here. Uh, first of all, my uncle and my elder, uh, Chief Richard Labordi. Um, also my auntie from High Bar, uh, Chief Rose Haller. Um, and Bonnie Leonard, she used to be chief of uh, KIB. Uh, Arthur Manuel, uh, his, his father is George Manuel, and he followed in his footsteps fighting for title and rights. Uh, chief, he was a former chief of this. And, and Linda Price, who's um, uh, served with uh, uh, UBCIC, and more importantly is the mother of Kerry Price, our gold medal Olympic winging goalie. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to say after Nicole, Shane, and, 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 and Joe. Um, what, what I do know, I got my splap kicked, and not just me, all you other Schwep McChiefs. For those of you who aren't Shoe Schwep, Schwep, Terrier, all right? Um, because we, we, we had this uh, very, very good debate, hey, Diane, yesterday about uh, the treaty process and, and what it means to Schwepmik and what it means to a title case and, and how that um, title is collective, right? You can't single it out to any band. It, it's Schwepmik Ulu that, that will hold title in the Shushwap Nation, like the Chilcotans. I mean, the, the, the Chilcotans have, have lit the way. So it, it's, not, it's not the end of British Columbia, it's the beginning of opportunity for First Nations. Is, is, that's what I take away from the Williams decision, from the Chilcotin de decision. I, and, and I raise my hands to you and I take my hat off to you. Thank you for, for doing that fight with us and for us. All right, Cook's Gem. Um, the one thing people, um, wh when we, we talk about that fight, and this is what Arth Arthur Manuel did when he was chair of Shushwap Nation Tribal Council, is, um, uh, the Browns Wilson case. Williams filed two months before we did, so they beat us to the punch by uh, by two months, and so we we became interveners in that case, and that's why we're we're so close with. Oh, you're, you're I'm lactose intolerant too, so, but I didn't have pizza. Um, I'm gonna talk to Alan Shaver about it. So so anywho. Um, what, what I do is, is uh, I, I'm, I try to have, um, give, give a voice and, and make it a little bit easier for First Nations to enjoy the jurisdiction because that's what 
all of this is about. This is, is not about, you, you've heard Joe, Joe say, it's not about money. It's about respect and it's about jurisdiction. And, and it's about our value chain. How do we incorporate those things into business? How do we reflect those things into our management decisions when it comes to forestry? How do we incorporate those things when it comes to mining or fisheries? Um, that kind of thing. Because our connection to the land, it, you know, we've been here since time immemorial. We've been here since, a, since we, the last ice age is basically what we're saying. And so how do we incorporate those, those values? And how do we get industry and the province and the regional districts to respect that? And, and we do that by, by forming partnerships, first of all, around law. Right? N like Nicole spoke very eloquently about that. We need to develop uh, our uh, set of laws that um, Canada respects, you know, as it, based on the Charter of Rights and Freedoms of Canadians and then based on the title, title case. And so what we need to do is, is to demonstrate how those laws would work. And so it becomes more about enjoying the partnerships through jurisdiction and not through necess you know, revenue sharing and those kinds of things. Because revenue sharing agreements, for, for what they are, it's an admission by the province that they're occupying a space that they shouldn't occupy. They're, they're occupying a space that should be aboriginal. So when they give you a piece of money from the forestry, FRAs, for example, forest resource agreements, so they, they give us, what is it, 500 bucks in Indian? something like that, and then they give us a truckload of wood per Indian. Has absolutely nothing to do with the size of the territory or how much they take off the territory. And has everything to do with how many heartbeats you got walking around the Indian Reserve. And, and so they come up with that formula. I don't know who thought that up, but he'd probably get his splat kicked if he ever came and saw an Indian about it. Because it, 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 in, in Shushwap Nation, we commissioned a study in 2009. Um, how much, um, what was it, rent and stumpage does the province collect out of the Shushwap Nation territory? And it was $5 billion. It was remarkable. And, and plus there was, there was no input as to how they do the logging. It was all just basically slash and burn, right? And so they make us do our own little forest stewardship plans to do this, to get a little license, so just enough so that you can get into trouble. All this stuff is, is terrible. And so what we're trying to do here at the Tula School of Indigenous Economics is, is how to change the laws of this country so that you can respect and embrace the Williams decision and respect and embrace what we're doing with the Browns Wilson. Wilson. And so that we can lift ourselves up. You hear First Nations say that all the time. We want to lift ourselves up. We don't want to be under the thumb of INAC. They don't have our values and our welfare at heart. Theirs is somewhere else. It, it, it's here that we have our health and welfare and our ideology at heart. We are probably the best to look, suited to look after ourselves. What we, all we want is the opportunity, but the Indian Act prevents that. And so how do we amend the Indian Act fashion that we can enjoy those things? Are, am I green carded already? I just roll. I'm getting on a roll. Dude, now Bonnie's kicking my ass. Oh, black card. Okay. And, it's, and, and there's, there's Bernie. Like one, I remember when I got elected, I read the Indian Act. And I thought, wow, piece of crap that is. If you got... If, if you guys want to know why Indians are so hostile, read the Indian Act. It describes our life from birth to death. I mean, it's remarkable at how vindictive that is. It's, it is not put there for our prosperity. It is there to imprison us on reserves while they go around and join our jurisdiction. And the Williams case opens that door so that we can start doing that. In this place of higher learning where we know that Chief Shane's lactose intolerant, we can get the laws we need to look after ourselves. Thank you very much.